So as business owners, coaches, and really as leaders, our goal is really to help people solve problems so they can actually create massive results in their life. The problem we run into is when they start getting in their own way, talking themselves out of taking action, or allow outside circumstances to dictate what they do or don't do. That's where coaching trumps every strategy possible. One of the most powerful things we can do for them is ask them great questions to help them come to their own conclusions so that not only can they have their buy-in, but we can also help them find the path to success on their terms. So what most people think is just asking questions in general until they get to the root of the issue is the solution. But that's just not the case. When you don't understand how to ask the right questions, sometimes you'll steer somebody actually in the wrong direction. Sometimes you will even plant limiting beliefs which will get them to take even less action than they're currently taking. That's why it's critical to ask the right questions, not ones that will hold them back more, but instead help them get out of their own way, create a plan, and then help them knock down the roadblocks that are currently up in front of them. Now, my mentor and I run an entire life coach certification called the Push Coach Certification School, where we teach people exactly how to do this. Now, we don't have time in the short video to go through all of that. Plus, it takes practice to perfect it. But what I did want to do today is start off with five key questions so that you can start impacting people's lives by learning the skill of coaching and help them create massive results in their life. If you're ready to learn my top five coaching questions with me, let's go. So welcome to Modern Leadership, where we see things differently. We help entrepreneurs become modern leaders so they can excel both personally and professionally without sacrificing family time or burning themselves out. If you're new, consider subscribing. Now, before I share these questions, I want to make sure that you know what not to do. Because even if you have the best questions in the world, if you lead with any of these questions, you're very quickly going to be throwing your client off. So the first thing you don't want to do when you're coaching is telling your client what they should or shouldn't have done. This is more mentoring, and there's some time and space for it, but when you're coaching people to take more action, that is not the time and it's definitely not the space. If they haven't currently taken any actions in the past, how could giving them more action actually help them? The answer is it doesn't. Not only does it create more of a feeling of overwhelm, but sometimes you plant the limiting belief that there's one right, best, only way, and there's not. Plus, shaming or guilting them based off of the actions they did or didn't take is never a great solution. You want them to leave your coaching session inspired, fueled, and motivated to get after it. And if they use some of the questions that you ask them to beat themselves up, they're not going to be taking much action after the session. The second thing we don't want to do is ask them questions that leads them down the path that we think they should follow. These are questions like, you want to change this, right? Don't you think what they did was rude? You don't like it when he makes you feel like that, right? Now, these are all types of questions which are pretty obvious in terms of where we're directing people. But sometimes it can sneak in. So just be sure you come from a place of curiosity rather than knowing exactly where you want to take the other person. And the third thing we don't want to do is implant limiting beliefs by asking them questions that just aren't helpful. Oh, you're overwhelmed? So how many hours a week are you working your business? Now, it might seem like an important question, but you're also putting emphasis on the amount of hours that they're working. Now, if you're a life coach, you know that overwhelm actually comes from your thoughts, not from the actions that you're taking. And if you ask somebody this question, they're now going to be focused on how many hours they work rather Other than their thoughts, which is actually creating that overwhelm. Or how about this one? You haven't lost weight? Which routine are you following? Which workout are you doing? And what diet are you following? Once again, we'll ask these questions with the intent of really helping somebody, but we'll put too much emphasis on the actions and not enough emphasis on their thoughts. A lot of times these questions will get people to feel that there's one right best only way. And if they aren't doing that, they're not going to succeed. But that is never the truth. So what should you do instead? Now I'm going to give you my top five questions so you can get to the actual root of what's holding people back. Now I do want to say you want to approach this with a feeling of curiosity, not because you're wanting to guide them in any direction, but because you want to find what the solution is for them. Now I even use this when I'm actually selling one of my programs. If I'm getting on the phone wanting to guide them to my program, I know that's going to bring some weird energy up during the call. Honestly, all I want to do is help the person. And if my program will help them, I'll 100% invite them to join me. But if not, I'm not going to try and steer them in the direction of joining me. It just feels really weird and awkward to me, and it really attacks my integrity. That's the same thing you want to do when you're having a coaching session. You want to help people come to their conclusions and find out what is really holding them back, not steering them in a direction because you think that's the best way for them to go. So let's dive into these questions. Number one, if I could wave a magic wand and fix anything in your blank, what would that be? Now you can insert business, relationships, family connection, health. We really want to get to the root quickly of what's actually holding them back. Now let me just come out and say, whatever they tell you is generally not going to be the thing that actually holds them back. You need to dig a little deeper, which is why we jump right into question number two. Tell me more about that. Now based on this, you want to start listening for the thoughts and the stories that are really holding them back. Remember that belief drives behavior. 
So if somebody is not taking action, it's not the fact that they have the list of actions or not to take. It has to do with a belief that's keeping them stuck. And when we get to the root of the issue, we can help uproot it. Now, question number three, which you'll hear me say all the time, is what's the problem with that? The reason why this is such a powerful question is it calls out to what we refer to as our head voice. It's the thing that's there to keep us safe, to keep us comfortable. And it's also the voice of the past that tells us this is the way we've always done it. So we have to continue to do it this way. Now, based off of these three questions, you should be able to identify the head voice that is preventing or keeping them stuck. And yes, this does take practice, but I know you're up for it. So what do you do from that point? Let's jump into question number four. Now, once you overcome this, what would this create for you in your life that isn't possible right now? This will start to get them leaning into their heart voice. This is the voice of the future, of potential, of hope, of purpose. This will also start to shift their belief system a little bit, but we have to dig one question further. Oh, and if you're enjoying this video, definitely hit the like button. And that leads us to question five. If you were giving a friend or family member, someone you deeply cared and respected for some advice, and you couldn't change any of the facts or what happened, what advice would you give them? Now, this is a really powerful question because it's very easy to speak from your heart when you're talking about somebody else. But when we're talking about ourselves, we get trapped in our head voice. And so one way we can do this is we can ask the person what they would say if they were communicating with a friend who had this exact same thing happened. Now, like I said, this structure takes practice, which is why me and my mentor, Josh, actually created a push coach certification school. If you want more information on that, I'll leave you the link below. So you might get to this point and might be wondering, when should I actually life coach somebody versus mentor them? Don't worry, I got you covered. And this is an important question. I'll leave the next video up for you on the screen. This is where Teresa and I broke down the difference between coaching and mentoring and when you should choose each one. Thank you for being here and keep leading from the front leaders. Bye.